religious ties that there's no joy, there's no there's no power of the Holy Spirit. But we belong to a church. We have a church here that's I believe is uh, not bound by religion, but rather bound by the relationship to Jesus. Amen. And that is always the, <laughs> that's always the better of the two. Hallelujah. So today, let's uh, let's draw near to Him. The Bible says, if you draw near to Him, He'll draw near to you. And it's it's not like we sit here and wait for Him to come. We we do have to kind of get up spiritually and go yes. over to Him. Some people don't do that because they don't feel they're worthy. And you know what? They're right. But that doesn't keep us from entering into the presence of the Lord. Because if, if we had to wait until we had we made no more mistakes, how many know that we'd be waiting for a while? But instead, in our stuff, in our mess, in our confusion, in everything, He receives us. So. Would you raise your hands to him for a moment and just, just go ahead in your heart. Just talk to him. Just thank him for what he is going to do today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, we praise you. We lift your name on high this morning. We exalt you. You are our God. You are our King. You are all-powerful. And you are Lord of Lords. Thank you, Father, that we don't just speak into the air, but that we actually speak to a God who exists. And this morning, Father, we pray for your will to be done in our midst. We pray for your will to be done in each member individual. For those who are still coming, we pray that you would bless them and encourage them. Let your will be done in them. And so today, Father, as a congregation, let us enter into your presence together. We lay aside those things that would hinder us, Father. And we pray for our nation. We pray that your spirit would even guide the hard-hearted. Lord, the heart of the King is in your hands. How much more... It would be if he was willing. So today we lift up our leaders, Lord, to you. We ask for your covering and your protection upon them. And that you would speak through them, Lord. So, Father, let the church in America, hallelujah, this morning, be revived, be filled with your spirit. Be filled with the spirit of revelation from your word in the name of Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Glad to have David and Jubilee. Yes, and, uh, yeah. 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 Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise. Yeah. 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 Why don't you turn and greet someone, shake somebody's hand, hug somebody, show some love, open them in the house of the Lord this morning for the morning, amen.
Father, you are great, worthy, Lord God. Yes. And with the name above your name, Lord Jesus, that heals us, Lord, and saves us, and gives us peace and comfort, Lord God. So this morning, Father God, not just today, but as we are here, Lord God, we take advantage, Lord God, of the blessings and the life that you give us, Lord. And we make the best of it, Lord God. We're not promised tomorrow. We thank you, Jesus, for today. Nothing sings my soul.
You know, the Lord is great above anything. His name is above every name. You know, sometimes we, we try to convince people that God is great. We don't need to. He is. Amen. All you have to do is look out at night, not here in Riverside, but on the mountain somewhere, <laughs> and see the stars and see the glory of the night sky. He is great. He is awesome. <laughs> How many believe that he can do anything? Anything. Okay. How many believe he can do anything in your life? Amen. David's way of applauding. <laughs> you know, sometimes we lose focus that he can do anything. Amen? He can lose, we can lose focus. Uh, you know, we go through dark times, and kind of quiet times, and times that we don't hear God, you know. We don't know where he is, etc., etc. But you know, he's right there with you. I mean, he's right there with you. I don't see the air. I see what the air does. You know, John 3, I see what the air does. But I don't see the air. Can you imagine someone panicking because they don't see the air? What if there's no air to breathe? It's there. True, right. Just breathe. See, we, we don't have to see God to know He's here. He's here. And where God is, all things are possible. All things. He's not going to keep you from problems, always. Especially those problems of our own doing. Yeah. But still, he, he, he's not in the business of shielding us in the sense that we don't experience difficulties. We experience difficulties. When you're going through a difficulty, it is not a, it, it's, it, it's, it's not because you did something wrong or God is displeased with you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Difficulties are not a sign that God is displeased or that you've done something wrong. All you have to do is read Hebrews 11. Man, those guys went through some stuff. But the world was not worthy of them. In other words, their faith brought them through whatever the difficulty. Now, I want to pray that there's several. Because Jane and I are pastoring this church, we, we understand uh, uh, with our minds, you know, that, that there are things that, that are happening, but I, there are things that we don't know that are happening as well with people. And so I want to just pray for a moment. And if, if you need God to touch you in a very special way today, tomorrow, but, but to touch you, would you just kind of, you know, just raise your hand to him for a moment, just to him. Father, we, we pray for every single individual here. You've called us to a higher life of victory. Father, you've not called us to to remain in these difficult times, but rather that we would walk through them. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So Lord, we thank you for your presence, that even though we walk through these difficult times, we thank you that you are with us, and that you've called us to a life of victory, a life of fruitfulness. Say that for for a moment. You've, God, you've called me God, you've called to, a life of to a life of fruitfulness. You've called me, you've called to, a me. to a life of victory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
And, when, and all of these shifts and tiltings create stuff. You know, I think, I think what's even more crazy is that you and I are standing right now on the San Andreas Fault. I mean, that's kind of, that requires a faith to live here. It's like building, building uh, new homes in the, in, in the, uh, uh, in New Orleans, where it was flooded. But anyway, so, you know, it's, it's okay, all right? It's, we're, we're going to make it, and, and, and actually at the end, I hate to be so anti-Earth Day, but, and I'm not, okay, but seeming like I'm anti-Earth Day. I mean, Peter says that in the end, it's all going to burn. This earth, this thing will burn with, God destroyed it first with water, but now it'll destroy it with flames. That's a, I think we need to be kind of a little more concerned about that. Right. <laughs> but I understand, you know, if I wasn't a Christian, I'd be hugging trees too. I mean, it's okay. All right? I really would. I'd be, I'd be marching. Midweek, we're going to conclude our James series this Wednesday, and then we're going to go into Ephesians for a, a little while, so if you want to come uh, Wednesday nights, uh, it's always a pretty exciting time. And then uh, next Sunday night, not tonight, next Sunday night is our annual, our monthly prayer. Alright, so we start at 6.30 and end at 7.30, and that's, man, that is always, that's been a good time. That prayer has been a good time, hasn't it? It's a little different each time, so... Come next Sunday, and then uh, tickets are available for our Daughters of the King Tea. And $3. Bring someone. Debbie, are you going to be back there afterwards? Okay, so Debbie will be at the table if you want to uh, uh, give up your three bucks. CLC missions trip, we're going to Hopi, and that's why I decided to do this again, because uh, just for your information, I want you to put this on, on your refrigerator. Now if you have two, Put the front on one side and the back on the other side, and then you'll have a full brochure. And put that on the on the refrigerator and pray for this. July 4th week, all right, we're going. And if you want to know more about the Hopi ministry, just test, test, Hopi.org is, uh, uh, you can go on Hopi.org. You know, yesterday I was, I was doing something, my, and my iPhone goes beep, whatever, and I have an email, and uh, so I look at the email, and it's someone who contributed to Hopi.org through Adopt an Elder on our webpage. And it's just kind of neat. And he was from Holland. And so I, I emailed back. I said, uh, thank you for your donation. And I said, incidentally, Langkorst, I'm naturalized Dutch. And so he, he emailed me right back, like within 10 minutes or so. He emailed right back. He was pretty excited and thanked me for doing what we could, you know. And uh, he said, maybe one of, one of these days, all of us Dutchies can get together. <laughs> no, I think we're fine. But it's, it's neat though, isn't it? I mean, some guy in Holland gives me money, doesn't even know us. I email him back, and then five minutes later, he, he, he's back talking to me again. Is there a test? David, are those uh, uh, monitors on? No? Testing. I think we live in a great world, don't we? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm back again. Oh, that is so cool. That is cool, yes. I love this time. Okay, that's it, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Kids? Oh, they're, they're already gone? Did the kids go already? Go ahead, you want to say? Because it wasn't in here. You've gotten letters in the mail say, talking about there, we're making some. Ch we've been making changes in the children's ministry. So Wendy and I, Wendy is like the lead person, and I'm her support and kind of the mouth is, you know. So I'm the one up here talking, and I may I may corner some of you and say, hey, would you guys like to step in? But you know, we really want to see some awesome things happen. In the children's ministry because you know when we start planning into them you know I, I love my my youth but you know if we don't start planting into the young ones as they're coming up pastor Jack made a, a couple months back he said you know the youth are an unreached are becoming an unreached people yeah. but it starts earlier than that yeah. 
And we need to make an investment in these kids. So in three weeks, on, the 20, on May 20th, we're going to be doing a workshop after church, bring your lunch, and if you have been in the church for about six months, and then we will, of course, you know, there are different circumstances um, that maybe you can't, but if you have a desire to work in the children's ministry, whether it's nursery, whether it's the two to five year olds or the kids of Blaze age group, we want to see you. We want to come, come see us beforehand. We want you guys involved because we need helpers. We need substitutes. If somebody gets sick, we need to be able to call somebody. So we are asking you to come. We're going to have some trainings. And you know, when we have other people and new people come in, we get fresh ideas because sometimes what worked then isn't necessarily what's working now because our technology and what these kids are have coming at them, we need to we need to be right there with them. That's not saying that the foundation goes away, but sometimes the delivery has to change sometimes with these kids. And you know, we want to see people that have a heart and want to pour into these to our children because as they come up, we don't want the enemy to be able to get a foothold because they didn't have a good foundation. We know sometimes that, that things can come in and cause them to stumble, but you know, if they have that good foundation and they have people and men, that it, this includes you, we're not excluding you because a lot of these kids have broken homes and they don't necessarily have a male figure. They need to see you. They need to have that, that positive person in their life. So please, if you've been here six months, at least six months, and especially if you have a child in the children's ministry, we want to see you out at, at this meeting, okay? And that's what I have. What, what is yeah. it? It's on the 20th. We'll start about 1 o'clock or 12.30. Grab some lunch and then come on over. Test. Test. Um, is it is it echoey or sound like I'm speaking in a box? Testing, testing. Testing. One, two, three. Does it sound right? Okay. We're we're called to a higher life, amen. Uh, when I was living in Parker, Arizona as a kid, I, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't wait to get out. If you've never heard of Parker, Arizona, that's okay. It's a little tiny town on the Colorado River, halfway up the state. It's about 150 degrees in the shade at night. In the summer, it's ridiculous. It's, it's very hot, very dry. It's desert. I learned how to catch uh, rattlesnakes and lizards. It was a great time, but I just couldn't wait to get out. It was too small. So I went from there to uh, uh, Tucson to go to the University of Arizona, and then from there I went to San Diego boot camp, and then from there I went to New York City, and from there I went to Denver. And so, you know, I was, there was a time that I wished that I could get out of Parker, Arizona, and it actually happened. I'm not there today. Yeah, right. Amen. You know, there are things you may wish that God might do in your life. Oh, yeah. Sure. And He will. Yeah. And He will. Yeah. Come on and say it. Yeah, say it. I mean, He will. Yeah. You know, the, the, the worst thing that I think we can happen to us is, is, is to think that it's going to be like this forever. Yeah. Right? And, that, and that, 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 just, that just freaks me out. That, that it's going to be like this forever. Well, hey, I was handsome at 25 once. Here I am, okay? And things change. Things change. I mean, they change. They really do. We, you know, this thing came to pass. This too shall pass. All of these things. We're never, we're never stuck. We're not ever stuck. If you think you're stuck, uh, that's, that's, that's what the enemy wants you to think. You, you may not be able to see any way out at the moment, but that doesn't mean you're stuck. Right. 
Seriously. Things change. I mean, even the world has phrases like this, all good things come to those who wait. Well, now in the Lord, isn't that more true? Isn't that more true? All good things come to those who wait on the Lord. <laughs> well, we're called to a higher life. Now, I'm not talking about we're called to drive Mercedes or Lexus or all of them or whatever. And that's not what I'm talking about. When I say a higher life, I'm not talking about a financially elevated condition. Because, man, I'm telling you, I've seen very depressed rich people. And I've seen very happy, less rich people. <laughs> so the, the wealth issue, in fact, in some cases, the more wealth you have, the more responsibility comes with that. Pretty soon, you're just you're just sucked into this this thing. In fact, there is a thing that the Bible says that those who set their heart on riches will perish. Yeah. And so, I don't want to think that that a teaching on prosperity means riches only. Seriously, because you know I have heard teaching on prosperity, on biblical prosperity, and all they were talking about was the money issue. Yeah. I want to tell you that's a fallacy. And it'll, it'll, you, you'll start setting your heart on the riches, and you'll be destroyed. That's right. That's right. Set your heart on Jesus. That's right. And if he gives you riches, praise God. If he doesn't, praise God. It's not about the riches. It's about, it's about being living on a higher level with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I'd, rather be, I'd rather be poor and happy inside and fulfilled than wealthy and, 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 and have nights awake wondering what my money is or who's taking my money or whatever. Is, how's the stock market? How's this? Where is... Ah! You know, it's like, you know, it drives you crazy. Always looking over your shoulder because, you know, somebody's going to get it. Whatever. It's, it's ridiculous. I had, a, you know, I had a man, I had a friend in Tucson, George Meal. George uh, came into Tucson about the same time I did. I was a hippie. He was kind of a hippie construction guy. And uh, he started working, and, and he ended up uh, creating a, a really good construction business. In fact, he, he ended up uh, uh, building the uh, Weston Hotel and all of those big things over there. George was amazing. Man, he, he had the riches, but they did not have him. He was one man that I just, I, I thought, if I ever going to be rich, and the Lord said, oh, don't, don't hold your breath. <laughs> I want to be like that. He's the one that supported our, our, our ministry for several years called Tucson for Mozambique. I was in charge of that. And we fed literally tens of thousands of people a week. Do you remember that, Jane? Wasn't that cool? Yeah, it was really amazing. But George didn't win the lottery. George. Who? Earned his money. <laughs> God blessed him, but he wasn't always wealthy. He tithed. He was faithful where he was. God grew him. He was faithful where he was. God added. He was faithful where he was. God expanded. He was faithful where he was. You know, you have to be faithful where you are if you want, if you think you want, or if, 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 if God is going to carry you to the next fruitful uh, season, you're going to have to be faithful right where you are. Pastor Jack, what's God's will for my life? Be faithful where you are right now today. But I hate my job. Well, you better be faithful where you are. Pretend that you're a boss and you have employees. What if they were always looking for something better and they were never faithful? In, you know, would you promote them or not? You wouldn't promote them if they weren't faithful where they were. Hello? Right? If they're sloppy, if they're looking at the ends of the earth, if they're always griping about their situation and, and wish they had more money but, and then came up to you and said, I, I want to be promoted. You wouldn't promote them because they're not faithful where they are. 
but you promote people who are faithful where they are. That is a principle in God. God only promotes those who are faithful where they are. Come on. We have to be faithful in little things before we can be faithful in bigger things. If, we're, if we haven't learned to be faithful in little things, when if, if somehow we get bigger things, we won't be faithful there. People, people winning the lottery are not faithful with their finances. Period. I don't know. I mean, there may have been one or two here and there, but I guarantee most of the people that have won the lottery were not faithful in their finances. Because sudden riches is not God's way of prospering us. And we live in a society today that is just so lusting after sudden riches. Wow. I mean, just type in, type in uh, wealth opportunity on Google. Okay? The key words are wealth and opportunity. Man, you, you, you get millions of websites of scams, guys. Scams. Please, be wise. Don't fall for those scams. If it's too good to be true, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Come on. I mean, that's got a 100% success rate. You know, it's always that way. So, we, but we think this one opportunity, it's just, this is, this is different. It's different because they changed someone's wordings. And they, they started, they kicked in, you know, listen, advertising is, is a multi-billion dollar industry. And they, 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 they work hard at using the words and the phrases that conjure up images that touch your heart, that cause you to react. Oops, this isn't it, hang on a minute. That's nah, a little joke. Newspaper headlines. This is how words can, can be so misleading. You know, have you ever read uh, bulletin bloopers type of stuff? Well, this is newspaper bloopers, all right? Include your children when baking cookies. <laughs> they taste better that way. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. Just, just, just the phrasing of these words, you know. <clears throat> Something went wrong in jet crash. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> these are headlines. They, 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 didn't, they didn't do the wording correct. Experts say police began campaign to run down jaywalkers. <laughs> I think you ought to do that today, man, right here. Run it down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Safety experts say that school bus passengers should be belted. <laughs> Drunk gets nine months in violent case. Read it again. Drunk gets nine months in violent case. Siamese, uh, survivor of Siamese twins, joins parents. <laughs> Minors refuse to work after death. Uh, I mean, you know, this is, isn't this weird how just arranging these words in, the, in a little way makes the whole, change the entire meaning. Mm -hmm. Juvenile court to try shooting defendant. <laughs> Soviet ships collide, one dies. <laughs> Red tape holds up new bridge. <laughs> That's stronger than duct tape, man. <laughs> Astronaut takes blame for gas and spacecraft. <laughs> Sorry. Kids make nutritious snacks. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? This is cool. Man minus ear waves hearing. <laughs> it, it changes. It changes everything. You know? And the enemy does this to you. He uses the word of God to, 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 to make you think that you are not living or not able to live a life that God has, has ordained for you. And you can. And you can. He says, hath God said? Yes. But he said it like, has God really said? So he, he twists the words. He twists the words so that we, we, we get something out of God's word that isn't true. 
One of my greatest uh, 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 ambitions in, in, in the kingdom is to make sure that people <laughs> understand how to read the Word of God. Not that I, I'm learning myself, but I do have this conviction that I will not make up my own interpretation. I don't care what it is. I can't make up my own interpretation. It is of no private interpretation. I can't do that. I can't pretend the Word of God says one thing when what it doesn't say that. God hasn't called all of us to prosperity in the physical sense. Period. He hasn't called me there. Although I am in, in living in, in, in a prosperity, I'm living in the blessing of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Absolutely. You need to switch it for me. I think you need to be faithful and content where you are. Doesn't mean content like that you're, you know, oh, I don't want to go on, or, you know, it's not apathetic. Content means that you know that God has something better, but you're going to be. You know, you know, actually, I just thought of this. So years ago, the Lord told me I was going to pastor a church. Well, I, you know, I had this picture of pastoring a church. Now that picture is gone, and I've got another picture of pastoring a church. But before I did it, I thought pastoring a church was this, you know. And so I, I, I have. <laughs> You know what I had to come to? That I never, that I actually dropped the concept of pastoring a church. I, I became so involved in what I was doing for Pastor John in Tucson that pastoring a church was not part of the equation. It wasn't in my thinking. He had told me back here that I was gonna pastor a church. And a lot of people want to pastor churches for the wrong reasons. But here he said, Jack, yes, what do you want to do? I want to shepherd your people. Bam, shut, okay, done. So I thought for a while, ah, oh, it's going to happen next month, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's not going to happen for a while, huh? Yeah. Oh, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Yeah, really? Yeah. Forget it. I don't want it to happen. I started working with John and, and being so consumed in my, in my connection with him and my work with him that pastoring a church had absolutely dissipated from my thinking. All of a sudden, one day, John and Doris Holland, he was the president of Foursquare, they told my pastor, John Castile, Doris and I feel that Jack and Jane are to pastor in Flagstaff. I've probably shared this story, but I, I need to share it again. John Castile was really irate and mad because that meant that he would lose me and we were, we were really connected in, in, our, in our callings. Church was huge and it was just, it was awesome. So he, he didn't tell me for two weeks. John was so mad, John Castillo was so mad, he didn't tell me for two weeks. Then one day, he called me in, <coughs> and he said, Jack, uh, John and Doris feel like, now, John had said to John, pastor in Flagstaff, John Castillo said to Jack, they told us that you were to pastor somewhere. But that's not true, is it? And all of a sudden, all of this stuff, where I thought I'd never... Forget it, you know, to all, all the, the stuff that I'd been through from that point on slammed in my face. And I said, whoa. Yeah, I think so. And John freaked. He said, you, you want to pastor a church? I said, John, I've been with you all these years. Do you not know me by now? <laughs> I said, yeah. Oh, this is what he said. But then I want you to go and fast and pray where you are to pastor. You remember what I said that John Doris mm -hmm. said they're to pastor in Flagstaff? John Castile said, Jack, I want you to pray about where you're going to be pastor. I didn't know this was going on. So I went up to Mount Lemon, which is the big mountain there by Tucson. And as I'm driving up, I kept hearing Flagstaff, you know, and I thought, devil, get out of here. <laughs> that's, not, that's not where Flagstaff is nice. That's not where. 
God wants to be the pastor where it's weird and ugly and all this. No. <laughs> God flags that. And he, but he kept saying it to me. Flags that. I said, Lord. So I, I, I'm driving up and I get to the top and I said, Lord, I, I'm here to fast and pray where I'm supposed to be. But I keep hearing Flagstaff. And then it was, it was like, <laughs> it's Flagstaff. I was up on top of the mountain probably 30 minutes. And I came back down. Flagstaff. Dana's there. Dana's pastoring there. How can, how can we not murmur to myself? How can, I don't understand. But Lord, if it's true, all right, you know. But. So I walk into John's office and I said, John, hi, I'm back from my prayer and fasting. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours, you know. He said, and what did God say? I said, Flagstaff? Wow. He was both you know, surprised and super mad at the same time. <laughs> First thing he said was, who told you? I said, who told me what? That Dana had resigned. Wow, oh boy. Do you see, if, if I hadn't have waited for it, mm -hmm. yeah. if I had pushed my own way in, yeah. I would never have been convinced because Flystaff was tough. I would never have been convinced that that was God. I would think it was my own doing. But you see, this is, I'm, I'm saying this a little introduction because it, it kind of encapsulizes everything I want to say just in a few minutes today. It's really important that we understand that we are called to live in a higher plane level than where we are today. Yeah. We're to be faithful where we are today, but this isn't the end of the road. Right. No one is stuck, no one is caught, no one is immobilized. We are called to a higher level. I've got three points, all right? Isn't this great? This is the perfect sermon. Three points. First, first one is, is uh, in First uh, Peter for a moment. Go to First Peter. First of all, because of the resurrection, we have a hope. Have you ever said this? I hope so. Have you ever said that? You know, such and such is happening. I hope so. What, what, tell me about that hope so. What does that hope mean? What does that mean? It means that it may or may not happen and you hope for the best. You kind of wish that it would, you know. It seems like that a lot of things that that I wish for, you know, wish for the best. It's always, I don't know. I, have, you ever, have you ever watched this movie, Pure Luck? No. It's about this guy that has nothing but bad luck everywhere. I mean, it's it's a funny movie. It actually makes me a little nervous because he gets himself into so much trouble all the time. And things. I, sometimes I think that's me. <laughs> All I'm doing is coming here to pray, and I'm in the middle of this shootout and gun thing. You know, it's it's crazy things that happen sometimes. But I've, I've learned that when when God says when he when he refers to hope, it is something that we can literally sink our teeth in. It is going to happen. It's something that the hope is not. I hope so. The hope is it's coming. Are you ready? That's the hope. It's coming. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, it says this. Blessed be the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a what? A living hope. A hope that's alive. Hallelujah. It's not a dead hope. I hope I win the lottery is a dead hope. The lottery is a tax on dumbness. It is the, the odds of you winning the lottery are so minuscule. By the time 
You win the lottery, you've already spent that much money. Right? According to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away. Reserved in heaven for you. Let me break it down just for a second. Our inheritance is reserved for us. If you've ever gone to a nice restaurant, you make reservations. They take you to the table that's reserved for you. No one else can have it. Secondly, thing, this, this, this inheritance that you have because of Jesus Christ is, is incorruptible. Contrary to the popular opinion of, of uh, 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 evolution, where everything goes from a lower to a higher state, it really goes from a high state to a lower state. Everything else goes downhill. You leave a car out there, a Volkswagen out there, it, in 10 years it does not change to a Lexus. It doesn't. It can't. You leave anything out there, and it begins to decompose, <laughs> right? It starts to go downhill. Well, the inheritance that God has for you is not buried in the earth and subject to the laws of this earth. It is in heaven. It's reserved in heaven for you. It is incorruptible. Nothing can touch it. The devil can't touch it. You can't touch it. It is there. When you die, when you go up, yeah, there it is. Come, Jack, I've got a table for you in heaven. It's been reserved for you. You know, you know, heaven isn't going to be just a whole bunch of people having activity and you kind of sneaking in and wondering if you know anybody. Have you ever been to a party like that? You know? You kind of just don't know what to do. You're like, oh, I... Uh, all right. You know, feeling really dumb and stupid. Heaven is going to be like, all eyes on you. Welcome! And you're going to be able to see, wow, that's King David. Our inheritance is reserved. It won't decay. And where he says uh, 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 that uh, we are, we are, let me see here, that, that we're actually saved unto salvation, which means we're not covered from things in this earth, but we're, we're covered towards salvation. That we're, we're, uh, what God has ordained for us in salvation is for us to walk in and claim our inheritance. See, a lot of people think that, that, that on earth we're to claim all of our inheritance and everything. And it's not so. We, we don't get everything here on earth. This is a down payment. The Holy Spirit is a down payment of things to come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen? The blessings of Abraham are not wealth, physical. They are salvation, which is more than wealth. Is that all just salvation? Well, then we have no vision of what we have been given. The blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. But the ultimate message in Abraham's thing was, he was the father of faith. But in, in chapter 11, where he offers up Isaac, it's Jesus. Yeah. It's Jesus. Wow. That's the blessing of Abraham. Is a relationship with Christ outside of Judaism, outside of religious behavior. It's a relate. The, the curtain has been torn from top. It's an open relationship with the Christ, with the creator of heaven and earth. Whoa. Well, so hope. We, we've been called to live a life of hope. Yes. We're, we're, we're not called to live a life of I hope souls. We're called to live a life of hope. Uh -huh. We have a hope. Have a hope. Right. Number two, because of hope, we have faith. He has given us a measure of faith. I don't have faith for that. Did you know that the Bible says that he has given us a measure of faith? 
Did you know that every situation that you are confronted in life, every situation you are, you are faced in life, there's enough faith to conquer that thing. You never are faced with a situation that you don't have the faith to face. It is against the will of God that way. It's against His policy. It's against what He does. It's, it's not how He does it. He doesn't give us something and then not give us, oh, I forgot to give you the faith for that. I'm sorry, Jack. Ooh, wow. Ooh, you're beat up, aren't you? Oh, I'm so sorry. He gives us the faith. I don't have the faith for martyrdom today. But if that was ever the case in my life, I have the faith when I need it. It's there when I need it. I don't have the faith for a, a car accident, but when it's there, hopefully never, I'd have it. I don't have the faith for, for, for whatever situation comes to me, but when it comes to me, if I look to Jesus, bam, there's the faith for that situation. Come on. God would never allow a situation to come to you without you having the faith to conquer it. Now, to have faith to conquer it, you've got to have your eyes on the right thing, the right person. If you have your eyes on the thing itself, you won't have the faith. I mean, if all you can see is the situation. And I was talking to, I was telling David, Jubilee, was, your, your dad, he was out there, you know, sitting out there. And I said, I said, Pastor, what are you preaching on tomorrow? Oh, Man, it's like I unplugged him. And he, the whole neighborhood heard his, his little message. I mean, everybody heard it. And he starts getting really excited. And he's talking about John, John 11, about, you know, where have you laid uh, a Lazarus? And he was connecting that. And I don't have the whole sermon, but he was connecting. Where have you laid your problem? And, and he comes up to the problem, and that problem comes. It's dissipated. The death of Lazarus is gone. Lazarus comes out. And I thought, whoa. I'll preach that in a month, okay, so no, there's no connection here. It's not his alone. But it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was really awesome. I went back to my office going, yeah, whoa, where is that problem, man? I'm gonna kick it out of here. <laughs> you know, if you look at your problem, yeah. Where have you been, Jesus? You know, he's dead. If you had only been here. Boy, I'd better be careful because I'll preach that sermon here. <laughs> Seriously. But, you know, two, where were you, Jesus? And the other was, why were you not here? Mary was a little more softer in her question than Martha. If you'd only been here. See, you see, it's whatever the situation we have the faith to endure it and to walk through it. However, we need to we need to fix our eyes on the right thing. If you fix it on Jesus, you'll have the faith. If you fix it on the problem, you will be destroyed. You'll get bitter, angry. You'll blame God for all the bad things. But if you keep your faith on or your eyes fixed and connected to Jesus, then He'll get you through it. He'll get you through it. He will get you through it. We're not serving a dead God. We're not serving an empty God. He will get you through it. Period. I have never been in a, in a trial forever. Because today, I'd have, a, I'd have about a 10,000 trial thing here. I, I mean, every trial I've been able to walk through, haven't I? Haven't you? Haven't you been able to walk through every trial? Of course. Don't, don't look at the one you're in right now. Let me know all the past ones. Yes. You, you've, yes. you've gone through those things. It didn't kill you. Yes. Right. We want a life with no problems. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Let me tell you what kind of a person you'd be. You'd be self-centered. You'd be complaining if anything bad happened, even small or large. But actually, you would, what would you be like for a minute? What would think for a moment? What would you be like if we took your skeleton out of your body? You wouldn't be able to stand up. Did you know that? No, no, couldn't. I think was, I think Jeremiah was asking me that the other day about a skeleton. Yeah, we were talking about it. He goes, 
wow, Papa, I, I'd go like this and my arm would just flop down. I said, six years old. He's got to go on there. I said, yeah, you wouldn't be able to walk. You'd just be, you, you, you'd be able to move, but you'd be on the floor, on the, on the ground, slithering like a snake without a skeleton. A person who never, and never experiences difficulty or anything is like that person. They can't even stand up. But God has called us not a life without, but a call is a life with power in every circumstance. Oh. That's, he's not called you to live. I mean, wouldn't, is, wouldn't Christianity be a disappointing thing up to this point if, if you heard that God is, the, the saved people really don't have problems? Well, you better get saved. You better get saved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be crazy? Because that's not the truth. The truth is, think it not strange concerning these fiery trials that have come upon you. But God has given you the measure of faith to go through everything that hits you. Everything that hits you. Marie Sanchez came up to me one time and it was uh, Bob Sanchez's former wife when she passed away. And when she first heard about my daughter Liz, she said, oh my gosh. I said, that freaks me out. I said, what? If you've been serving God for the way you have, and your daughter is murdered, what hope is there for me? I said, well, who's, listen to who's talking right here. It's Miss Fear that's talking. And first of all, if, if that ever, God forbid, if that ever did happen, you would have the faith like I have. When I tell the story about my daughter, people always, always put themselves into that same situation without the faith that I have. And thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could do it. Well, you can't. You can't. It isn't. Situation you can't bear without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But with the Holy Spirit, yeah. you can walk through this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So, no matter what the situation is, I must be preaching really fast, or that clock is slow, or both, because I'm almost done. <laughs> Hey, 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 don't hold your breath. Don't get your hopes up. You have faith. Oh, goodness. Jim, don't you have another church to go to? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And, and, and the story in this faith situation here, if you're jotting down notes, the story is uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18 and 20, that, that whole chapter basically. And uh, let me read to you the, the, the first couple of, or the verses in the very beginning. And it said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, remember now, no one was, everyone was to bow down, remember? And they refused. So he drug them in. King did. They answered and said to, to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver. He was, he was saying, you are going to be burned. You're going to be thrown in the, if you don't bow down, you'll be thrown into the, and they said, listen, listen, that isn't our concern. See, if I stood at that place with a roaring fire in front of me, right now, I, without the faith, I'd be Again, my, my friend said, Jeremiah, he threw, a, he threw a sword in the air, but it went over the fence into the yard with a pit bull. We have a pit bull behind. And he just, he just lost it. Poor kid, he just lost it. You know, it's like, he's like shaking. Ah! He didn't have the faith for the sword being in the, in the yard <laughs> with a pit bull. I said, it's okay, we'll call. You know, he, was, it was, he was consumed by that fear. And, and a lot of times, I think, 
A lot of people are that way. When things hit them, they're just like, they don't know what to do. They, it's like, all they can think of is the thing that hit them. The experience. And until you get your focus, not on the event, on the circumstance, but on Christ in the circumstance, right. things change. Right. Things literally change. Right. Believe me. Right. We have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, if you're going to throw us in the fire, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O King. Ooh, that cut. But if not, is that lack of faith speaking? No. They, they don't have the faith in the, in the deliverance action. They have the faith in God. So if your faith is in God, whether or not this happens is no longer the issue. It was the issue before that. But when you all of a sudden look at God and you, oh, you're in His presence, then whether or not He delivers you is not the major issue. The deliverance has already taken place. You've already been delivered. There, there are stories from people in, 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 the, in the, the, the Jewish concentration camps that learned to, f to fix their faith on, on God in their situation. And they were able to endure and go through the horrific torture. Because their faith was not on the circumstance, but on Jehovah. But if not, let it be known to you, O King, that we do not serve your gods. Oh, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. That is, that is conviction. That is something that the church must develop in a greater degree, is conviction. I will not do that. I will not watch that. I will not take part in that. Rather, we, we, we're, we're, we're so concerned with our relationships with people that we, that we quickly and easily <coughs> cool our commitment. We compromise. We, we, we say no because everybody's doing it. You know, I've got to do that. You know, well, everybody else was doing it. Well, no, that is not a fly in heaven, man. I did it because, you know, I was, I was trying to win them. And I was just, no, no, no. You did it because you were afraid to say no in that situation. These guys were not afraid. They said, listen, King, what you have, what you have declared upon us, whether or not our God delivers us, we are not going to worship your gods. How many of us can say that about this society today? We will not worship the God of lust. We will not worship the God of, of, of wealth and money and prosperity. We will not worship this image that's been set up in California, in Southern California in particular. We'll not worship this image. We will be who we are. We will walk with confidence in what God has, has done in us. And we're not afraid to say yes or no to the right things. Yes to the right, no to the wrong. Right? Yeah. Amazing. And because we have faith, we have confidence. So because of the resurrection, we have hope. Man, if Jesus didn't res resurrect, this would be another religion. Where we could go and pay homage to the, to the tomb. Uh, while we were in Ethiopia, we we saw Haley Selassie's tomb and touched it. Guaranteed his bones were in there. Yeah. If I was to break open the, the big coffin, we would find his bones in there. Mm -hmm. But you pay thousands of dollars to go to Israel to look into an empty tomb. It's like, okay, I, I thought it was empty. What, why, not, why not spend this much money to see it? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. <laughs> or you can, it's not really quite that easy. It's just, it's enshrouded with all this religious yeah. paraphernalia on top and everywhere else. They've got a little, oh, it's so religious up there anymore. Yeah. I'm so sorry. 
Okay, the last one. Confidence. We are called to a higher life and we're able to see what God is doing. We, turn, you, you gotta see this one, okay? Turn to Second Kings for just a moment. It's just a very quick evening. Second Kings. It's towards the front of the Bible from where you were. Second Kings six. You know, you know, first of all, when you turn to scriptures, never be embarrassed that you don't know where it is. Secondly, you can ask somebody next to you, and if they don't know, well then hey, you, you got a companion in grief there. Or you can always go to the table of contents. <laughs> That's the best thing, just talk contents. Okay. Or you can have a cheater Bible like this. Pass. Okay, you there? <laughs> Look at this, this picture, and I'm only going to read just a few verses. But in chapter 6, uh, verse 8, the, the story here is that uh, this army wants to invade Israel, but, the, but uh, Israel always gets the word from Elisha where they're going to be. So the king gets really crazy about this, and he sends his people anyway. And, uh, and the man of God sent the king. Let me see, where do I start? Therefore, verse 14, he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God, which, you know, this is Elisha, his servant, arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Listen, this is not just some... I mean, he's, he doesn't have a spirit of fear on him. He's got cause to be afraid. This entire area is surrounded by an incredible army all the way around. There is no escaping this situation alive. <clears throat> Period. It is desperate. He's got his eyes on the, on the army. My master, master, what shall we do? Elisha's reading the Jerusalem Post. It's early in the morning. He doesn't even lift down, he doesn't even take down the paper. He just says behind the paper, he says this. Where am I? 16. 16. Hey, don't fear. You know, it's, don't you hate people who say that? When you're afraid, don't, don't you hate it when people say, come on, don't be afraid. You, you want to just smack them. <laughs> you know, <you're> going. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a double whammy of repentance there. Seriously. You know, you're all panicking and, and somebody super spiritual, right, comes up. Come on, you know. That isn't what he's doing here. But there are people who do that. People, people put their strength next to your weakness. Hello? It's easy for me when I'm not afraid to tell somebody who's afraid, don't be afraid. It's a whole other ball of wax when I'm afraid. So I, I can't stand that, first of all. You know, I, I just... And that's me, you know what I mean? I should be able to take it, but I, I don't. I just, I just go instantly into this... Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like this little flare-up in your heart? You know? Have you ever felt this little flare-up in your heart? It may not go to your face. You know, you'll, you'll be smiling. Yeah. You know, you got the claws out. Glory, <laughs> but thank you, my brother. <laughs> isn't that, I mean, that's just the way we are, isn't it? But Elijah said, he's reading the paper, he goes, hey, hey, don't, don't be afraid. Wow, that would freak me out. You're not even looking at what I'm looking at. But notice what he said. He said, don't fear. For those, you see, he's putting his, his faith not in himself or his own ability or whatever, and he's certainly not looking at the situation. But he says, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. 
They don't have anybody. They've got a few little gnarly little demons hanging around, hanging around. But we have this. We have this. The, the angels of God. <laughs> and Elisha, uh, Elisha prayed. He said, "Lord, that's Jehovah right there. The word Lord. I pray, open his eyes, that he may see." Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Wow! I wish that we could take our, our, our ability to see and lift it just for a while to see, because sometimes we think the enemy is gonna, is kind of, he's kind of winning here in this situation. But if we could just see what's really going on, even for a second. Right. Wouldn't that be cool? Yes. Uh, if, if, if you've ever read uh, Peretti's books, you know, the, uh, uh, This Present Darkness and Piercing the Darkness, those are good, good allegories, good stories of that. I mean, just the, the, the fact that we don't see these things battling in the, in the heavenlies on our behalf. We're just walking around, kind of, we're afraid of this and afraid of that, and the angels are battling, doing battle for us. I mean, it is intense what's going on in the spirit realm for you. For you. Why? Because you're the, you're the children of God. And he's and, 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 and you wouldn't let your own little kids, you know, you know, when you have little kids and you're not at home, you're somewhere else, don't you have them in your sight all the time? Right? You know, I, I, I ran away from home. I think I was six. I mean, where can you go at six? You know, I'm, I'm leaving. And you know, I really did get lost, and I have this picture in my mind of, 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 a, of, a, of this big bell tower in this little place in Holland. We live. I remember that we lived on the other side of the bell tower. You know, I remember that. I had actually walked away a little while, and I don't know where my mom and dad were, but they were not where I was. And I started to panic. I mean, I started to panic. And I have no clue why I'm telling you this story. <laughs> it just completely escaped me. God was there. Well, whatever. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not even, with you, I'm not even going to pretend that I, I still know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> I don't know how I got to this spot. Help me get back, okay? Okay, here we go. So that, that was it, you know, Elisha asked the Lord, open this kid's eyes, and he saw. If we could only see. If we could only see. How many, I mean, I know we all do, just because we have to, because we're Christians, but how many really do believe that you're not on your own? Oh, yeah. 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 Listen, listen. The decks are stacked against the devil. Yes, they are. They really are. They're not just. It's not fifty-fifty, and the best may the best win. It is zero. A, a Google. You know what a Google is? No. It's not a search engine. It was a number before the search engine. And there's an even higher number called a Googleplex. How many did not know that? That's right, you're right. Okay. Isn't that neat? Google is not some word they came up with. It, it was actually, it, it actually represented a number. But it's so big that we can't get there. And then to make it even weirder, they even invented a number even bigger called Google Plex. Well, here's the enemy. Here's the stack up. It's not, it's not Goliath against David. Hello? That's right. right. It's not even Elisha against the... Mm -mm. Or it's, it's, it's Satan... Zero. God's people, infinite. See, I'm not even going to say Google Plex, because that's a number that can be attained. There is no attainment in God's ability. There is no end to God's ability. Satan, zero. God's people, infinite. We have infinite more power at our disposal than, the, than Satan has in the... He has no power. Right. <laughs> no. 
He's been stripped of his rank and authority. He's been declared the loser. And he's been paraded through every spiritual realm that there is. And Satan does not. He only pretends that he hasn't lost. You have more power available to you than you'll ever need in all of eternity. You have everything you need right now to face every situation you'll ever need to face. Period. Boy, that enemy. I get mad at it. I just basically say, you know, I am so sick and tired of you flapping your jaws about my weakness. Get out of here. And I woke up this morning weak. <coughs> Go to church this way. <laughs> Last night I was I was coming back from here. And I there's a little a little area that I drive through and kind of talk to the Lord. It's and I, I heard these crickets. I thought, wow. So I, I pulled off and there's there's little cars on it. It's just it was pitch black. Pull my car off and I turned it off <laughs> and the instant I turned it off, the enemy said, You won't start it back up again, you'll be stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you didn't waste any time with that, did you? But I rolled down all the windows, opened the sunroof, and all of these crickets. <laughs> and I don't, know, I don't know what it was. It wasn't the crickets, but all of a sudden I was in the presence of the Lord. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I can't explain this. You know, it wasn't. There was no light around me, and you know, I was just. I was just all of a sudden. Hi, Lord. Hi, Jack. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Uh, wow. This is neat. All my problems left. All my anxiety left. All my fears split. I mean, there was nothing else but, wow, this overwhelming confidence that I was in the presence of the Lord. And I wish I could tell you I was there for hours. <laughs> I looked at my watch and I'd only been there for about a minute and a half. Wow, if you can do eternity in a minute and a half, that's pretty cool. So I started the car. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm talking about. got home. It was the moment I got home, all this tiredness hit me. I'm totally out of the presence of the Lord right now. <laughs> but you know, you know, just to get away, just for a moment, it completely energizes you. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's for just a moment. Yeah. Just changes your entire perspective. Touch God this week. Good. Touch Him this week. Yeah. You gotta pull away. You gotta shut that thing off. Yeah. Yeah. You know? can't have it on buzz even. <laughs> Seriously, you got to shut it off. Because the moment you get into the presence of the Lord, there's a need somewhere. <laughs> Bring home. You know, you're instantly, you got to cut it. You've been called to a higher walk than where you are today. Amen. You have a hope. Yes. You do have faith. Yes. You do. You have the faith. You have the faith for the surgery for your little boy. It's tough, but you have the faith. Amen? Yeah. If the faith is not in whether or not the surgery will be successful, which it will, but that's not the issue. Of, that's not the point of faith. The point of faith is Jesus. And that he's in his hand. Amen? Let's... I don't know, this was... Is the Holy Spirit in the white? You're probably wondering why did we come back here? Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat to be in a good place with the Spirit? 
the same kind of thing? Yes. Well, you are. Listen, I'm going to close for me. What, what did you get out of this today? You know, just, just, just what, what point did you get out of this? You know, uh, isn't he able to, you know, we're, we're not all, I mean, some of us in this room, we're, we're experiencing a season with not a whole lot of trial, just a few little bumps in the road. There's some of you that are just, it's just been a cataclysmic event and you, you're trying to pull yourself out of the hole. So we, we have everything from that to that in this room right here. I don't know all of your situations, but I do know that whenever we have people, it's that way. So the people, you know, sometimes people will come up to me and they won't say this, but you know, I'll, I'll hear from them that the Lord didn't really speak to them a whole lot. But hey, look, you know, look around. How many were there besides you? There was, there was somebody else besides you. So sometimes the word of God is for someone else. But if you're open to the Lord, any word, is for you. That's right. That's right. Anyway, right. you know, you can find God in, I mean, don't do this, but you can find God in a Mormon church. Amen. If, if you go to a Mormon church to, 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 to kind of validate the fact that it's, it's a cult, yeah, you won't see God. But if you go in there and go, well, Lord, these people are bound, then all of a sudden your whole perspective changes. I mean, don't do that, okay? Don't go to a Mormon church. I mean, I don't care if you do. I, I have gone to a Mormon church. I wanted to find out what they did there. I, I've even gone to a Seventh-day Adventist. I've even gone to a Jehovah's Witness. I mean, I have. It's like, wow, no windows. That's weird. <laughs> Jehovah's Witness buildings have no windows. It's like, <laughs> that was creepy to me. Especially when they closed the door. <laughs> what are they going to do? Do they know I'm not them? <laughs> But you know, that, that's not the issue. It, it's wherever you can focus, wherever you are, you can focus on the Lord. You can focus on the Lord because He's called you a higher place than where you are today. Believe it. Seriously. You're not stuck. You're not hopeless. You are. You, you've got your life ahead of you that is absolutely incredible. Here's what you do to experience that. You step out of the boat. Start walking on some water here. Start doing what you have been called to do in spite of the situation. Amen? Let's pray for a moment. Let's stand. Let's... Donna, we have our Hawaii and the Jim and Sandy are going to be on a cruise here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God must love them more. Like, like the, uh, what, is, what is that? What are the two singers on the guitar a long time ago? Peter, Paul, and Mary. No, no the brothers, what is it? Righteous brothers. It's mother's brothers. You know, oh, mom mother. always liked you better. Oh, yeah. That, guy. You know, that isn't the case, okay? God doesn't like someone else better. <laughs> Aren't you glad? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I grew up in a family where my dad always thought I was the one that did everything wrong. <laughs> Anybody else like that? A scapegoat kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. weird. It was my fault. It, well, yeah. <laughs> in, in, in Margaret's, it was Margaret's fault. Yes, she really did do it. No way she did it. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's not the, the way. That's not the case. He loves you, man. He loves you. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Honestly, it doesn't matter what you've been through. I wouldn't stay in it very long, but it doesn't matter what you've been through. It's that, it doesn't matter what your past was like. When you come into the presence of the Lord, you are washed clean, man. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hey, let's end the service by just worshiping Him for a moment. Just go ahead and raise your hands. Father, thank you, Lord, for today. We give you praise, Lord, for... Just what you've done in our lives, past, present, and what you're going to do, future. We embrace you. We walk in your spirit, Lord, this week. We pray for this week. We pray for your will to be done. We pray for strength on our behalf, Lord. That you would move and do great and mighty exploits through us, according to the word. Lord, thank you for this people. Thank you, Lord, for this people. Bless them. 
fill their day with you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, amen. amen. David, uh, Sam says that he comes. Come, oh, pray a little bit. Stand here and just enjoy the presence of the Lord. So much. Oh. 